If our thoughts are the result of some random evolutionary process, why should we believe anything we think is true? Well, the first thing is that um, evolution isn't, isn't a random process. Um, but that aside, uh, it's... Well, what... let, let, me, let me put it this way. It's either, it's either directed by an outside intelligence or it's not. Sure, okay. I'll if it's that. not directed by an outside intelligence, then it's random. Yes, so? So if it's directed by intelligence, then perhaps God exists. If it's not sure. directed by intelligence, why should we believe anything we think? There's an awesome back and forth exchange. You really see like the conversation unfold and go to deeper levels as it does so. So without me talking anymore, let's go ahead and dive in. And then I'll give some of my thoughts on the back end. Enjoy. If evil does exist, as much as that may be a problem for why a loving God would allow evil, nonetheless, it's, it's a signpost that something beyond the material world uh, has, to, has to exist to, to allow this realm of good and evil In to fact, exist. I think Alex recognizes that signpost because on his website, he rails, I think rightfully, against some of the abuses of the Roman Catholic Church, where he talks about how priests have sexually abused children. And obviously, that's a great wrong. Mm. But my question is, Alex, if you really think that is a great wrong, why would you deny objective morality? I mean, is that really wrong or is it just a matter of personal opinion? Well, uh, I think that we agree in, in one sense that uh, evil doesn't necessarily disprove God. I, I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say is, is to answer your question, um, objectively, no. It, it is a subjective thing. Morality to me um, is, in, is entirely subjective. Why do you say that? Well, because, um, firstly, uh, a, a thing to note is that um, objective morality... Well, let's let's talk about what objective actually means. I mm -hmm. suppose um, objectivity, to me, if, if if you want my definition, would be to say um, that it is true regardless of human intervention, regardless of human consciousness. For instance, mm -hmm. the Earth orbits the Sun. That would be true if all humans disappeared, right. every single one of them. It mm -hmm. would still be an objective fact. Mm -hmm. But to say that murder is wrong, mm -hmm. if every human disappeared, mm -hmm. that couldn't still be wrong. Surely that wouldn't. That would be a nonsense concept mm -hmm. without some kind of human psychology. The only way that you could argue that perhaps it would still be wrong is if there was some kind of uh, transcendent being. Mm -hmm. um, but then you need to have that being in order to prove the existence of the objective morality that, that you're then using to prove the, the God. So but what we're doing is we're reasoning from effect to cause, that we have this effect known as this moral law that is press, pressing on us. And <clears throat> as you admitted in the video, and look, videos, two minute videos, <laughs> 10 minute videos, you can't expound mm, on all yeah. the nuances. So if, if this is wrong, correct me, but you seem to say that we, in fact, I think you quoted, the, the, the quote was, let me, let me just quote you accurately on this, because in the video, you said this, you said, uh, you said, moral truths are so deeply ingrained in, in, in us that they feel like they are objective, yes. right? Okay, so, my question is, why would you doubt their objective if they're so in deeply ingrained in us? Well, because um, this is where I think Sam Harris is right, mm -hmm. in the sense that um, if you have certain assumptions, so let's say that we could assume that uh, human well-being was a good thing. We'll, we'll discuss why uh, shortly, but mm -hmm. let's say we assume that. We could then say that it is, it is objectively true um, that we should act in certain ways, for instance, trying not to murder people. Mm -hmm. And that would then become an objective morality. Right. So because evolution has instilled within us, um, through, our, through genetics, a, 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 a drive to stay alive, um, then we can derive objective moral truths about how we should act in order um, that complies with this inner nature, which I think has come about through evolution. So even if, you're, even if you don't subscribe to the idea that uh, certain moral actions such as not killing um, or not stealing have come about through evolution, uh, the instinctual nature within us to stay alive causes us to think of those as objective truths. Um, but it's a technicality. So to, for all intents and purposes, you could say they're objective truths. If you grab 100 people off the street and ask them, is rape wrong? 100 of them will say mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's objective. I mean, for instance, I, I, I put it to you, uh, do, would you say that chocolate is tasty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, but that's a subjective. Right, you know, sure. Some people may not like chocolate. It's subjective. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, oh, so, so yeah. Tar, that's a flavor. So yeah. tar can be yeah. just as, yeah. as tasty as chocolate. Mm -hmm. But and that that's no problem, right. right? That's that's no problem whatsoever. So when you say something along mm -hmm. the lines of, um, oh, so morality is uh, subjective. So mm -hmm. so uh, what Hitler did uh, being wrong was just an opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, but in the same sense that um, chocolate tasting as good as tar 
is an opinion. See, I, I, I think it, when, it, when it we doesn't do, make a difference. Well, no, I, I think it does because uh, it's much more obvious that, say, sexually abusing children is wrong than atheism is true. Right. So why would you say that atheism is true in order to avoid the obvious conclusion that sexually abusing children is wrong? You already know sexually abusing children is wrong. Now, if you want to use an evolutionary argument, the problem is, is that undercuts everything you think. Because if everything we think is the product of evolution, the product of the laws of physics or biology, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, then why should we believe anything we think? Forget about morality for a second. Why should we even believe that atheism is true or that Christianity is true? If we're completely... If we're, I'm sorry, I'm suffering from jet lag here. <laughs> if, <laughs> if, if our thoughts are the result of some random evolutionary process, why should we believe anything we think is true? Well, the first thing is that um, evolution isn't, isn't a random process. Um, but that aside, uh, it's... Well, what, let, let, me, let me put it this way. It's either, it's either directed by an outside intelligence or it's not. Sure, okay. I'll give if you it's that. not directed by an outside intelligence, then it's random. Yes, so? So, if it's directed by intelligence, then perhaps God exists. If it's not sure. directed by intelligence, why should we believe anything we think? Because, I mean, this is the, the old um, argument uh, from uh, against naturalism that, mm -hmm. that people like... C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis mm -hmm. and indeed um, modern practitioners like Plantinga have put forward, which, as I understand it, is, is effectively saying if, if evolution, is, if effectively it's meant for the propagation of our DNA, mm -hmm. it's not... It's not aimed at us receiving true beliefs. It's not aimed at us actually. It's not aimed at reasoning. No. And, well, and ultimately, you could even go as far as to say that the the actual processes of matter in motion, atoms banging into each other, electrochemical processes those are those are non-rational. Why would we assume that they produce rational thinking? Because ultimately, I mean, and and your argument here, I guess, Frank, is it, it undercuts the whole mm. project. It's this of, idea. Of it, it's almost sort of existential you know why should we believe anything mm. if there's no if there's no guidance um to me it's like asking the question like you said earlier about you know how do we know that uh, we're we even exist or that the universe wasn't created last thursday mm. um for me it, it's it's somewhat based on consensus it doesn't prove it's true um but reason is one of those things that we need to assume in order to get anywhere in the mm. same sense we need to assume that we exist in order to have a philosophical discussion now that's a very wise point i agree with you the question is how do we explain reason on a naturalistic worldview well reason and consciousness can be explained as coming about through evolution our the way in which we sense but, the world. But l let's let's stop there for just a second, though, Alex. If that's the case, why should we trust it? Oh, well, we don't necessarily have to. Again, it's it's a subjective thing. But every single person. But it, but but that would mean reason's subjective. Yes. It, well, it is. Well, if reason is subjective, then if reason's not subjective, then how do you and I come to different conclusions using both using reason? Because we have free will. We. If reason's subjective, we couldn't even communicate. If there weren't these objective, unchanging laws of logic... Uh, well, yes, there are, there are objective um, rules and tenets of reason, but reason itself is subjective in the same way that morality, you can say, under certain assumptions, there are objective truths about morality. I, if you have a certain assumption about, uh, rash, uh, about reason, then yes, there are objective uh, tenets. Well, well that's reason. what I mean. These, these immaterial laws of logic that aren't made of molecules, how do we explain those on a naturalistic worldview. How do you mean? How do we explain? Why are there laws of logic? Why are there well, laws of mathematics? They're, they're a product of consciousness. And laws of mathematics are, are, are not uh, a thing in themselves, but rather a way to explain the universe. So the laws of mathematics would not exist without human beings. So they are subjective. But the things that they describe would. Oh, no, hold, hold on. So when you talk about logic, when you talk about reason, these things aren't ends. They're means. They're means to understanding certain things. So we use reason to understand that the Earth goes around the sun. We use the laws of maths to understand right. how that happens. But you just said the laws of mathematics are human conceptions, basically. Yes, it's a language. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say there were no human beings on the Earth and there sure. were just two rocks on the Earth. Was it true there were two, just two rocks on the Earth? Well, it depends what you mean by two. I mean, sure, like you, if, if in the, in this the, is in where the everyday things, sense of the word, this is where this is where things get confusing, because, for instance, you, I suppose what you're asking is something similar to the question of does two plus two still equal four if there are no humans? Mm -hmm. And to me, um, the case, the case is you have to think about what you're describing when you say two plus two. So, for instance, if you're saying if there were two rocks and you added two more rocks, mm -hmm. would there be four rocks? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But to say that two plus two equals four is like um, is a 
it's a good way to bring in the, the idea that mathematics is a language because uh, in the same way that I can say... But it's not an arbitrary language. Well, it's, it is. It's, in fact, language itself is based on mathematics, and that's not arbitrary. I'd, I'd say it's absolutely arbitrary. Um, if math is arbitrary? No, math isn't, but the language you, we use to describe it is. It evolves and changes. Well, uh, yes, but they're, they're uh, referencing objective facts. If we want to call this one book, mm -hmm. it, there is only one book here. Yes. Okay, that's an objective fact. If we wanted to call it... Uh, eins, like in Deutsch, that this is one book. Okay, that's a different word, but mm -hmm. it's representing the same objective fact. And if if we're going to say that reasoning is objective, then there's no way we can come to any conclusions about anything. There are different ways, even within the laws of mathematics. Oh, so did I say objective or subjective? I, 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 I don't if, recall that. If we're going to say, <laughs> yeah. say reason is subjective, then okay. there's no way we can come to any conclusions even, about anything. But that's self-defeating, because when I say that, I'm making a truth claim that if reason is subjective, then we can't come to any right. true conclusions about anything. That actually is a, an objective truth claim. Well, I, w I would say that even with something as objective as maths, mm -hmm. there are subjective ways in which to understand it, the language we use, even though it seems that it wouldn't be the case. For instance, if you want to find uh, the, the, the roots of a quadratic equation, you can do it by using the quadratic formula, you can do it by expanding the brackets, and you get to the same answer. But, but the reason you're using to get there is subjective. So the answer is, is a fact of nature, it's true. That would still be the answer, even if you didn't exist but the language we used to get there okay, and the reason that we used to get there wouldn't yeah but that's no the reason is objective but the the there's different levels here you have ontology which is the study of being sure okay you have epistemology that's how we know we the know. study of being then you might have semantics which is how you describe mm. the epistemology to get to the ontology sure this can be arbitrary but it's still tethered to objective facts it's a it, it's it's ultimately uh, tether to an objective ontology. So what are the tenets of objective reason to you? Well, start with the basic laws of logic that they're... For uh, instance... The, the law well, of the excluded middle, yeah, things like that. Law the, of non-contradiction, law of excluded middle, uh, law of uh, inference, um, law of identity. Those are the essentials of the laws of logic. And you start with those, and then you use your sense perceptions to draw conclusions about the real world mm. using those tools, those objective laws well, of exactly. logic. Well, exactly. They are their tools. And this this is the thing that I see when we're, when we're talking about uh, whether reason exists. Reason is a method. Um, and so it, it almost... It helps us in epistemology, mm. but if they weren't tethered ontologically, if, if, if they weren't tethered to reality, there'd be no way we could know anything about reality. I mean, you're, you're making the claim that th this realm exists, that we... we Called the laws of logic sure. and so on, and and that it's it's a, it really is something that we discover in that mm -hmm. sense. It, yes. It's an it's an element of the 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 reality we live. We in. don't it's determine them; we discover them exactly. Yeah. It's, whereas you're making the case, obviously, Re Alex, yeah, that, that reason that we, is not something we, we discover. We pr produce it's it's something we invent because it helps us. Yeah. To but you reproduce. see, that's an objective truth claim right there. That's see, that's why it's self defeating. Alex is saying it's objectively true that reason is subjective. And, and the, the same applies to the moral argument as mm -hmm. well, which is you're saying there's this realm of real right and wrong, good and evil. And you're saying, no, these are just concepts we, we invent. We yes. don't discover them, but we invent them. And I know many people whose part of whose journey to belief in God has been based on the fact that they came to the view that there really is a, a realm of right and wrong that I discover. I no longer believe that it's all subjective. That, and, and obviously others who take your view as well, mm. Alex. I mean, fundamentally, is that where we do we just come to an impasse where you say, Frank, there is real realms of, you know, these objective laws of logic and there's real realm of uh, good and evil. And you just say, no, in my opinion, it can all be explained as, as a subjective because ultimately well, I believe in objective moral good and evil because for me, I see that as bit like i see racism is wrong is the same as one plus one equals two that that but you say no that that racism doesn't well, exist when humans don't I, exist i agree with you that i see it as the same to yeah. me they are both as instinctual yeah um, but that one plus one equals two uh is again it's a mathematical language but if you're talking in the se in the literal mm. sense mm. that one thing and another thing equals two things and yes that is objectively true but to say that racism is wrong although it feels just as instinctively mm. true it doesn't have the same objective say, grounding say in Say you were living reality. a few hundred years ago in the American mm. South and maybe racism is kind of just part of the culture. That's the accepted way of things, um, at least within the, the white population, let's say. Would, because that's the generally accepted 
de facto, you know, way of people thinking about it. Would that mean racism is okay in that culture? Because that's... Well, it's a difficult question. Okay, pretty funny ending to the clip there. But I want to kind of just break down really the substance of that conversation. It's actually very simple, even though they went back and forth a number of times. There really are two options. Either morality has been given to us from above by God, in which case it is objective because God is actually able to say this is how things ought to be and therefore that is how things ought to be. Now, I will grant to you that that implies that you, I mean, you must have a belief in God in order to believe in that. But I'm saying if there is a God, meaning an ultimate source of reality, of truth, of goodness, of beauty, of the universe itself, then he can say two plus two equals four and it is. And he can say that murder is wrong and it is. Or, so that's the top-down method of morality, which is the objective moral um, understanding. Or, morality has kind of evolved from the bottom up, and society has decided that murder is wrong. Society has decided A, B, and C. But if it is just from the bottom up, then it will always be subjective. You can't have something that is just a byproduct of time and matter and chance and biology and utility and Darwinian theory and all these things, it can't be a product of of evolution in a sense in a materialistic model and be objective. So either morality is objective and it is given to us by God from above or it is subjective and it has arisen from the bottom up. The problem is this. We all know deep down that morality is not subjective. We know that there are things that are absolutely wrong. These things are wrong not just because the majority of people agree that they're wrong, but they're implicitly wrong. And we we know this in the same way that 2 plus 2 equals 4, whether or not a particular society agrees, if there's a society that says that it's 3 and a society that says that it's 5, it's still 4. It's objectively 4. It's ultimately 4. And this is the same thing with morality. If... Hitler took over the world and convinced the majority of people that Jews are animals. And if everybody came to agree on that, that they have no value, that they don't have human rights, and that the Holocaust is a morally justifiable um, event in history, it would still be a heinous evil, even if 100% of people were convinced to the contrary. So morality is objective, and we know this at the deepest level. So then finally, because morality is objective, and because objective morality requires there to be a moral law giver, it follows logically that there is a moral law giver, that there is actually a God. And so ultimately, objective morality, this whole conversation about morality is is incredibly useful to illuminating the fact that there also must be a God. And so ultimately, I think this conversation is great. Um, and I would love to hear, I know people in the comments, I'm expecting it, I'm anticipating it. People are going to have, um, I think, some disagreements with that. And so I, I welcome those. I want to hear those. I've seen those in other videos, but I haven't really effectively seen anybody actually dismantle that that core, um, basically, syllogism. And so with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, turn on the not- notification bell, all the things that tell the YouTube algorithm that this content is the kind of content that you like to see. I hope you do. See you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye.